Once upon a time, there was a royal kingdom far away in a land with no rush hour traffic, no infomercials, and no email. <laughs> the kingdom was ruled by a king and a queen who enjoyed their work but felt overwhelmed by the demands of a sizable kingdom here. They consulted with a travel agent who got them a great deal on a two-week all-inclusive vacation to Dragonland. The king and queen packed their bags and called all their subjects for a royal proclamation. Hear ye, hear ye. The queen and I are going on a vacation to frolic and make merry. While we are away, our nephew, the Grand Duke, Dwayne, will rule the kingdom. We'll try to send a postcard. See you in two weeks. <laughs> well, with that, the king and queen climbed into their coach and pulled away. Immediately, the Grand Duke Duane strode out onto the castle balcony. Hear ye! Hear ye! Um, excuse, excuse me, um, Mr. Duke. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to make sure that everyone here feels welcome. Would you, would you mind holding off on your proclamation thingy for just a moment <sighs> while our worship leader does her thing? Thank you for waiting, Grand Duke Duane. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. As you can see, our worship service is going to be a little different today. Children and youth are going to stay with us during the entire service. Today's play comes from Story, Song, and Spirit by Erica Hewitt. 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 And, and is wrote, woven around a story filled with interesting characters. You've already met the king and queen of the kingdom and their colorful nephew, the Great, the Grand Duke Duane. My name is Chris Topaz. I use the pronouns she and her, and I am your, this morning's worship associate. Whoever you are, whomever you love, whatever your image of the holy, we're glad you're here. If today's your first time with us, we'd love to get to know you. Right after service, please join us for coffee and tea, which you can take in our welcoming room, which is located at the south entrance. Remember that this room is also for current members who want to get to know our visitors and newcomers, so please join us just to talk to and make new friends. Um, for those joining us online, the link to our visitor forum is being dropped into the chat now. Now, let's take a minute to greet our neighbors, especially ones you don't know yet. Okay. So you don't have to put it. Okay. You can just ignore it. Please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In.
Griffin? Griffin? The flaming chalice is a symbol of the Unitarian Universalist faith. We light it now and say together the words of our mission, which affirm our shared purpose. Empowered by love, we transform ourselves and serve our world. Today's stewardship moment will be offered by Carmen Coleman. Carmen, will you please come to the castle balcony? <laughs> I don't usually stand in front of a bunch of people and talk, so bear with me, except <laughs> in front of my students, yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carmen Coleman, and I use the pronoun she, her. I work as a teacher's assistant at Ridgeline Montessori, um, a public charter school here in Eugene, and I love children. Um, I have no background in the church, or any church for that matter, and will never forget the night that brought me here to you. Um, I was being asked to take guardianship of my then two-year-old grandson and knew I needed a community to help me raise him. I had already raised four children, three of whom I adopted, and knew the challenge that laid before me. In 2015, having no religious background, I had no idea where to turn. I got on the internet at 2 o'clock in the morning. I found you, and you looked beautiful. I showed up the next Sunday with Jackson in tow. He was the, in the infant room, and it was a lovely break knowing he was being wrapped in care, and so was I. It was a bridging ceremony. I was in awe. I knew the people in this church valued children as much as I did. I cannot remember who was the pastor at the time, and transition was upon the church for sure. Nevertheless, the love was here and strong. Over the years, I have been privileged to attend so many fun, humbling, enriching, and incredible moments because of the time, effort, and dedication of the wonderful people here at this church. From small group ministry to potluck dinners to social soul collage workshops. I have watched our youth bridge and been inspired to do what I can to give every child I know that level of respect and presence. I have been on quite a journey with my grandsons and today I get to be their resource parent. My big work in this lifetime is to help the children and I happen to love it. I know with the continued support and opportunities the church provides, we will have an enriching and connected experience. I am surrounded by the love, beauty, and dedication this church offers. I am honored to call this my spiritual home. Thank you for loving me and my children, Jackson and Christian, all these years and the years to come. Thank you, Carmen. And thank you, Duke, for holding off on your proclamations. We're interested to hear what you're going to say, so back to you, storyteller. As the Grand Duke Duane stood on the balcony from which his uncle had so recently bid farewell to his subjects, the Duke t took a deep breath and pronounced, I have a decree to issue. Hmm. <laughs> um, I think maybe the Duke is a slow thinker. Huh. My decree, um, hmm. my decree is that everyone shall return here tomorrow to hear my next decree. <laughs> Doesn't he know how silly he sounds? Um, that's Beatrice, a child who lives in the kingdom. <laughs> Be easy on the Duke, Beatrice. He's new at this. And he probably just couldn't think of anything to say. 
and that's Emmy Lou. That's Beatrice's mom. <laughs> Why doesn't he decree something useful like banning cell phones ringing during service? Some people do th strange things to make themselves feel important. Maybe the Duke will relax into things soon, and the King and Queen will be home from Dragonland before you know it. How much trouble can the Duke stir up between now and then? That's Sally. That's Beatrice's, Beatrice's mom, too. Well, I can't wait to see what the decree will be tomorrow. The entire realm was curious, as Beatrice was, and they were all curious about the Grand Duke's decree. The next day, everyone in the royal kingdom returned to the royal balcony as decreed. Some of them gathered out of obedience. <laughs> Some of them gathered out of curiosity. Some of them tried out the balcony. <laughs> they were curious about what the Grand Duke Duane would decree, and the rest of them gathered because they had heard a rumor that the castle would be giving away free coffee. Oh, that last group was mightily disappointed because there was no free coffee. Maybe they accidentally overheard me when I invited the congregation to hop coffee hour. Oh. <laughs> right, that's probably where the miscommunication happened. Well, anyway, all the people were listening expectantly as the Grand Duke Duane strutted out onto the balcony and puffed up his chest. Hear ye, hear ye! I proclaim that too many jelly beans are being eaten. We could have a jelly bean shortage if we're not careful. Henceforth, no one shall eat jelly beans without royal permission. I also proclaim that you shall not request royal permission to eat jelly beans, as no one is getting permission to do so. Everyone looked at each other bewildered. The king and queen, who were currently out frolicking at Dragonland, never made such silly proclamations. Could the duke be serious? Someone from the crowd even chuckled and said, oh, come on, Duke, we know you're kidding. Silence! I am very serious. Anyone found eating jelly beans shall be beheaded. You shall all return in one week for my next proclamation. Ooh, no one chuckled then. <coughs> Every, bless you. Everyone silently returned to their homes. Many shook their heads in dismay, but no one ate a single jelly bean. When the not-so-grand duke outlawed jelly beans, it was a hard week in the kingdom. People had to turn to chocolate to satisfy their craving for sweets, but they managed somehow to live without jelly beans. One week later, just as he had threatened, oh, I'm sorry, just as he had promised, the Grand Duke Duane stepped out onto the balcony once again to issue his decree to a growing crowd. And they wondered, would the Duke's next decree be as far-fetched? Hear ye, hear ye. Today, I proclaim that too many children are being impertinent to their parents. I believe that children become sassy and disrespectful because of the books they read. I've taken it upon myself to compile a short list of books that are acceptable for children. And I have instructed the royal libraries to lock up all unapproved books. Therefore, and henceforth, no children shall be allowed to read books that have not received a royal seal of approval. All who disobey me shall lose their heads. He's nuts. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that doesn't matter, sweetie. Until the king and queen return from Dragonland, the duke's word is law. 
for now, we should go home and gather up our books to send to the castle for royal approval. But moms, what am I supposed to do without my books? Each week, we carry into this sanctuary hearts that are full of both sadness and lifted in celebration. Please feel free at any time during the service to light a candle, place a stone in water, or write in our book to share your expressions of joy or sorrow. And they're located over there where David is pointing. <laughs> so will you all join me in a spirit of meditation or prayer? O oh, spirit of life, O oh, love eternal, though we may often forget, we remember now how interconnected we are and that we are truly interdependent beings. It is nighttime now in Turkey and Syria where tens of thousands of people are suffering after the aftermath of recent earthquakes. Every day we witness the courage and compassion of neighbors helping one another. May our hearts remain open as we consider the actions we will take to respond to this disaster. Closer to home, hateful actions continue to target our Jewish neighbors, our black, brown, and Asian neighbors, our LGBTQIA plus and houseless neighbors. May our hearts remain open as we bear witness to these stories let us resist the temptation to shut out difficult news. Here in this religious community, many carry grief as they remember loved ones who have died. There is grief as well for the less public and perhaps harder to share losses, loss of friendships, marriages, mobility, loss of capacity, dreams, faith. Let that grieving find a sacred ground in which to be honored. Life is woven with threads of joy as well as sadness, and so we lift up accomplishments and milestones happy moments of sunshine breaking through the clouds, resilient green pushing through the hard soil of winter. Today we celebrate with UUCE member Kim Neese, who has been accepted into seminary at Meadville Lombard in Chicago. For all the joys and sorrows reflected in the candles and the stones and in the book, for those spoken as well as those that remain in the silent sanctuary of our hearts, may we keep tending the flame of gratefulness. Amen and blessed be. Back to the story. As you will recall, the citizens of the royal kingdom were beginning to feel very upset because the Grand Duke Duane had outlawed jelly beans. And as it turns out, all of the most interesting books in the world. A week later, he issued yet another decree, this one more heavy handed than the others. As always, the Duke puffed up his chest and strutted out onto the balcony. Hear ye! Hear ye! Since I grew up with just one mother and one father, and I turned out so well, I proclaim that this arrangement will work best for everyone. In one week, 
any children who have too many mothers or fathers or not enough will be thrown into the dungeon. It, it wasn't that bad to give up my jelly beans, and it was kind of bad to give up my favorite books, but I won't give you up. I won't. I have two mothers. Both of you are my moms, and I've turned out great. He can't throw me into the dungeon. I'm afraid he can, technically, but we'll never let him take you away. Never. We'll run away to another kingdom first. We should have gone to Dragonland ourselves. Yeah. Come back next week for another royal decree. Oh, in the meantime, don't forget about the jelly beans. Throughout the village, everyone shook their heads in shock murmuring about the lengths to which the Grand Duke had taken his power. <laughs> While the Duke squirreled himself away in his aunt and uncle's castle studying very important papers <laughs> and <laughs> composing his next decree, he seemed of oblivious to the people's distress. He was certainly oblivious to the things they were planning. <laughs> the Duke didn't know that later that evening after dinner, Beatrice had an emergency meeting with her friend Dexter. Like others in the kingdom, they felt indignant about the Grand Duke's most recent decree. Stirred into reflection and action, Beatrice and Dexter made a list. There's Daniel. He has two dads. That's one dad too many, according to the Grand Duke Duane. Don't forget about Anas Anastasia. She lives with her grandparents. And what about Ezra? He has just one mom and no dads. The Duke will take him away from his mom, too. We love all of these people. We definitely have to do something to protect them. Soon Dexter and Beatrice had listed several other kids who did not have the right parents, according to the Grand Duke Duane, and who were in danger of being taken away by, from their parents. They were determined not to let their friends remain in this danger. So the next day, all of the children met secretly in the woods with Dexter and Beatrice, and Beatrice told them their plan. As the children of the kingdom meet to create their plan, we remember the places in our world where, where people are denied freedoms and denied basic human rights. We remember the places where justice and freedom have yet to take hold. The following day, the Grand Duke again strutted out onto the balcony, eager to make his next proclamation. The people gathered below, ready to meet his royal decree with their plan. Code name, rebellious resistance to royal wrong-headed righteousness. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. It has come to my attention that someone in this kingdom found a jelly bean under a sofa cushion and ate it. The jelly bean, not the sofa. <laughs> you are in big trouble as soon as I find out who you are. It has come to my attention that there is also an unapproved book circulating among the kingdom. I remind you that you will be very sorry if you are caught reading Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman. <laughs> the Duke's puffery made the kingdom's people even more determined to carry out their act of rebellion. However, what 
troubles me most supremely is that a number of families in this royal kingdom are defying my proclamation that families must have exactly one mother and one father. <sighs> Some of you children out there have two mothers and one of you has a grandmother instead of two parents and so on. Later this afternoon, my royal guards will seek out you children who, have, who are in such danger and put you in the dungeon. Suddenly, the Grand Duke heard voices rising from the crowd below. Hear ye. Hear ye. I proclaim that all goldfish must be potty trained. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, I am very smart and I believe it's because I eat my favorite sandwich every day for lunch. Fried onion with grape jelly. I hardly disagree that every I hardly degree that everyone must eat fried onion and grape jelly sandwiches at every meal. Huzzah! Hear ye, hear ye. I accidentally swallowed a grasshopper when I was two. Not turned out so well. <laughs> I proclaim that all two-year-olds must eat grasshoppers. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. I proclaim that dogs are not allowed to burp. As these proclamations rained down on him, the Duke began to cringe. A look of uncertainty crossed his face, and he held up a hand, but was speechless. And the proclamations continued. Hear ye, hear ye. I proclaim that this is the best royal kingdom ever. I proclaim that when the king and queen return from Dragonland, they're going to be very proud of their people. And I proclaim that we must pause the story to receive this morning's offering. <laughs> Potty trained goldfish? Fried onion and grape jelly sandwiches? Two year old swallowing grasshoppers? No burping dogs? The silly proclamations continued, and soon every person in the kingdom was chuckling or giggling. They laughed so hard that their sides hurt, and they just couldn't stop. Soon everybody was rolling on the ground, giggling and laughing and chuckling, poking each other and laughing some more. <laughs> The law. Can you say that one more time? I proclaim that great giggling is against the law. <laughs> Guards, arrest everyone laughing. Off with their heads. <laughs> but the guards were laughing too. You could hear them singing, off with their heads, off with their noses, send them to bed without any toeses. <sighs> this was too much for Grand Duke. He had never been so humiliated in all of his life. Everybody was laughing at him. And so, with his chest still puffed out as far as it could get, the Grand Duke Duane strode off the balcony down the castle stairs into his coach. He rode out of the kingdom as fast as he could and was never seen or heard from again. Well, <laughs> now every once in a while he did send a holiday card to his aunt and uncle. <laughs> Now, just in case you were wondering, that evening, everyone ate jelly beans for dinner. And except for a few stomach aches that night, they all lived happily ever after. And can I ask the cast of this play to come up and take a final bow? Come on, everybody, who's part of the play.
Thank you. Thanks, everybody, who took part today. And now let's say our closing words together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Go in peace, my friends. Go in love.